All right, so in uh, last week's class, we looked at how we can use GIS shape data to create 3D models of an uh, architectural site. And we were investigating a large piece of the city. Uh, another way we can do that is through census data. Now, census data breaks down in a, a few ways, but the smallest piece of data we can have is from a census block. Now, that's not a city block. That's something uh, a little bit bigger. It's a, a percentage of the population. Um, but we can download from the census uh, the census shapefile. The problem with the shapefile is that it won't contain some of the data that we might be interested in, say, the racial breakdown of the city, uh, the age, or the household type. And so we need to find a way where we can amend the shapefile by putting in other information. Uh, you remember from last week where we had a contour and we were able to find its elevation above sea level because that data was built into the shape. In the census block, we don't have that. So here, I've downloaded a, a program that's free for GIS. It's called QGIS, uh, and I'll be giving the link to my uh, students in class. And uh, there's a few things that we have in this file. Uh, I have my completed file, the thing we're making right now, and I'll show you how we do that. The first thing I'm going to do is to install QGIS and open a new project. Then I'll come in and I'll take my shape file, which is here, the PA block, this is for Pennsylvania, uh, 2010, and I'll just drag and drop it. And you can see here it's going to load up a, uh, a series of blocks. And if we zoomed in, we could see some of the area of Philadelphia. Uh, now, uh, just to speed things along, I'm not going to go into all the details, but here if I went to open attribute table, there is one attribute of the shape file where each one of these blocks is uniquely identified as um, called a geo ID. And that's unique to the state, and then the county, and then the track, and then finally the block. What we want to do is to take our, our CSV files, let's say by our population by race, and uh, put that's data from the CSV file into the shape file. So I'm going to drag and drop my CSV file into this layer. I'll take one second to process in. Just thinking about it. There we go. If I right click this and go to its properties, I can go to fields. And under fields, you can see that this is the data contained in the CSV. These are the things that are separated by commas. So we have the GIS join. That's when this was created. The year, the region, the state, the county, the track, the block. But if I move down, I don't see anything that says GeoID. Essentially, we have no way of comparing apples to apples. So we need to create a fictitious field that matches this up. Uh, if we did a little research, and I could show you on the census site, I know that the GeoID in the shape file is actually made up of a state uh, added to the county, added to the tract, added to the block. And finally down here, we can see this H7X through H7, this one here, this is all racial data. Um, and the reason I know that is because here in the code book, the text file that comes from the census, I can look that up. And so here I can see all these variables and what they mean. And finally, the data we're interested in here uh, of racial breakdown. So to do this, to merge these things together, I'm going to go uh, to field and go here. This button will calculate a new field. So I'll say, OK, I want to create a new field. And I'm going to call it the GeoID field. I'm going to make it a string, which is a type of variable, which will just be text. And I need 15 digits of text. So how am I going to make that? Well, I'm not going to manually code each one, so I'm going to say, hey, to do this, I want you to take the state A, which is the state value, and add it to the county value, to add it to the tract value, and then add it to the block value. So when I add all these values together, I will get a 15-digit number that looks like this. And I know that this matches the type of data that is being looked at in the Pennsylvania block. So I'll say OK. This will take anywhere from 2 to 10 minutes to kind of parse all the way through. So I'm going to pause the video and start again shortly after. All right, so it loaded up. And here at the bottom, I can see I have a new tag called GeoID. I'll say OK. Then I want to load this data into this shapefile. So if I right click the shapefile and go to Properties, uh, I need to go to Joins. I'm going to add a new join, and I'm going to go from my CSV file. I'm going to say match my GeoID to my target file, which is the shape, and I want GeoID. And I also don't want to join everything, but I'm going to just join the few fields we need, which are all the racial data uh, down here. 
So we'll say OK. Um, it'll take a couple seconds. Again, it's processing hundreds of thousands of pieces of information. Um, but knowing the different races that make up the city, now we can look a little bit of demographics. So I'll say OK. Uh, it's going to reload my shapefile using this new data set. I'm going to do this one more time, but this time I'm going to go back and get my age and household data. This data is a little more complicated, and if I look at the code sheet here, you can see uh, that I have uh, the same uh, breakdowns as before in my uh, racial data, um, but here I'm dividing between male and female uh, in different age bands. So there's a lot more to uh, kind of pull in. I also then have different household types within the city. So same process here. I'm going to drag and drop my CSV file. It's going to take a minute to load up into the system. And once it's loaded, I can see it's the 04 file here. So I'm going to right click it, go to properties again, go to fields, and uh, you can come down here and see that you know they're the fields that we saw in the text document. Again, we need to calculate a field. It's going to be geo ID. It's going to be a string. It's going to have 15 digits total. And then we're going to say we're doing fields, and we'll say state A plus county A plus track A plus block A. And by saying OK, it's going to take a minute, and it will create this new field for us. All right, so it's loaded up, and down here I know I have a new field called GeoID, so I'll say OK. And then once again on my uh, shapefile, I'll go to Properties and to Joins and say Add a Join. I'm going to go from 04 block. I'm going to use my GeoID and match it up to my GeoID here. And this time I have a lot more things to check. So uh, down at the very bottom, this is all the household data, the H8. And then I have about mm, 50 H7s to click, so I'm going to pause and resume. All right, and with that, there we go. Say OK. It'll take a few more minutes because last time we joined eight, this time we're joining a, a lot more. Um, but once those load up, I'll click OK, and we'll rebuild the shapefile with this new data set. So here's the shapefile rebuilt. I'm going to right click and go to an attributes table. This will show me the data that I've imported to make sure that there were no mix ups. If I combined my state, county, tract, and block in the wrong way, they wouldn't be able to match up, and we'll see a null value in this field. Uh, so we'll give it a minute. Uh, here we see kind of this is all from the shapefile, and our, there's my GeoID for each block. As I move down, I can see that this is from. Uh, the, the O3 file, so this is a, a demographic data, this is different races uh, in, in the city, and as we move further down this way, I have the O4 data and the H8 was housing, so I see that everything loaded in, um, I can close this, I can right click my new shape file and say save as, uh, I'm going to save as uh, uh, the amended shape file for PA by block. I'll do browse, I'll pick a location to save it, and I'll say OK. It'll output the shapefile, and then we can move on to step two, which is the next video, and how we can use this data in Grasshopper. I'll see you in the next video.